Hello, welcome to The Week That Was, in which markers were put down for the next few months. There was a build-up of Turkish forces along the Syrian border. Ankara said it won't hesitate to cross into the Afrin region unless the US withdraws support for a Kurdish-led border force there, a force Turkey says would amount to a terrorist army. The USA denies such plans. It's all part of the new phase in the Syrian war. With ISIL more or less defeated, attention is again turning to the wider issues which pulled in other countries. And that's partially why US Secretary of State Rex Tillerson said this week that the US intends to maintain a long-term military presence in Syria. It's to counter Iran and Russia's ambitions. ISIL's self-declared caliphate may have been smashed, but the terror group is still dangerous. On Monday, suicide bombers murdered more than 30 people in Baghdad. It's thought ISIL was behind the attacks. And this has dealt a blow to the hopes of increasing stability following the liberation of Mosul late last year. The attacks came the day after Prime Minister al-Abadi announced he's going to be standing again in May's general election. Several Iranian-backed Shia-led groups, including the Badr organization, say they will support him. Sadly, election campaigns in Iraq in recent years have been marked by an increase in political violence. On the Korean Peninsula, the high-level talks between the two Koreas continued. At next month's Winter Olympics, they are now expected to march together under a unified Korea flag. But does this mean North Korea will halt its nuclear weapons program? Probably not. And therefore it looks as if Kim Jong-un is buying time ahead of what will be increased American pressure once the Winter Games are over. Well, the regional tensions were apparent this week. Firstly, the Hawaiian authorities wrongly put out an alert that a ballistic missile was on its way to the islands, adding, this is not a drill. That sparked 38 minutes of fear before a correction was issued. Then on Tuesday, Japan's public broadcaster, NHK, reported that a North Korean missile had been fired and said the government urged people to get to cover. At least it took only a few minutes before, oops, our mistake. And then a somewhat dry government statement was released saying we want NHK to do their utmost to prevent a reoccurrence. Finally, to Macron the Conqueror. On Friday, the French president met Germany's leader, for now Angela Merkel. Why? To sort out the future of Europe, according to a communique from the Elysee Palace. Ms Merkel is in all sorts of trouble. She's agreed a grand coalition government with the SDP in Germany, but the SDP hasn't yet voted on it, which leaves Macron as currently Europe's most influential leader, as he tried to demonstrate in a visit to perfidious Albion, or Britain as it's also known. He and the somewhat embattled Prime Minister May agreed there was a strong and deep relationship between the two countries. It's so strong the UK agreed it will fund extra border security at the port of Calais, it'll take in more migrants and refugees who are living rough there, and the UK will also provide some helicopters to help move French troops around in Mali. Oh, and Le President said the Bayer Tapestry could be loaned to the UK in a few years' time, probably after Brexit. The Tapestry? It's about 1066 and all that, when in very broad brush terms, the French beat the English at the Battle of Hastings. Thank you, Mr President. That was the week that was. See you next time.